Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. From Julie Andrews' beloved turns in classic films like The Sound of Music and Mary Poppins, to her recent performance in the Princess Diaries series, this Oscar-winning actress has been delighting audiences for more than half a century. On screen, she exudes warmth and levity, though few people realise that her real life was often far from happy. How was Julie Andrews rejected by MGM for being unfilmable? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Julie Andrews originated some of the most memorable film characters of our childhoods, and she has continued to evolve over the years, remaining just as relevant and cherished as when she first graced the silver screen. With her eloquent voice, she makes it feel like she's talking to every audience member individually through her work. Not to mention there are likely many of us out there who count her as an honorary grandmother of ours, maybe even a nanny. The woman even travels with her own tea kettle, which seems so unequivocally her. Ever beloved and talented, Andrews has lived a rich life, much of which is just being revealed in recent years. Julie Andrews was the star of countless Hollywood blockbusters, but despite her cinematic success, Andrews' journey has definitely had its fair share of ups and downs, with a tough family life and a meteoric rise to stardom. Take a look at how this Oscar-winning actress fought her way from London to Hollywood on her own. Anyone who has seen the classic Disney musical Mary Poppins starring Julie Andrews may well have noticed the hint of sauciness about the morally upstanding Edwardian nanny. Not for nothing was she known to some in Tinseltown as the Iron Butterfly and to others as the nun with a switchblade. Starting with an unhappy childhood in Surrey in which she was forced to become the breadwinner for her alcoholic parents, followed by two difficult marriages and a career riddled with disappointments, Andrew's life was most unlike that of her saintly on-screen personas. The actress and singer who became a huge Hollywood star playing sweet and squeaky clean characters, and yet behind the polish and the innocent magic of her most famous roles, Mary Poppins and novice nun turned incomparable stepmum Maria von Trapp, is a personal life filled with struggle and fortitude, failure and passion, and plenty of heartache. Let's start with Andrew's grandparents, neither of whom she ever met, her grandpa who drank excessively and cheated, passed away at aged 43, but not before he gave his wife syphilis, which took her life two years later, orphaning Julie's mother Barbara. Julie was raised on the other side of the tracks, by an alcoholic and abusive stepfather and a mum who also descended into alcoholism. Her childhood was poor and troubled, and it was young Julie's unique talent that became the much-needed meal ticket for the whole family. Julie Andrews, in full Dame Julie Andrews, original name Julie Elizabeth Wells, was born on 1st of October 1935 in Walton-on-Thames, Surrey, England. At a young age, her parents were divorced and she was brought up by her father, her mother and stepfather. While Andrews has only fond memories of her father, Ted Wells, she experienced difficult times with her mother, Barbara Morris, and stepfather, Ted Andrews. My mother was terribly important to me, and I know how much I yearned for her in my youth, but I don't think I truly trusted her. After her mother left her father, Wells, for vaudeville performer Ted Andrews, young Andrews had to perform on the road with her mother and new stepfather. Morris drank a lot, taking a cue from her second husband, Ted Andrews. Stepfather Andrews, on two drunken occasions, attempted to get in bed with Andrews, who then put a lock on her door to ensure it couldn't happen again. Ted and Barbara Andrews formed a musical act and toured England entertaining the troops. One of her earliest memories is living through the Blitz, sheltering in air raid shelters. It is said that during the air raids, Ted Andrews would often start singing. Julie would also join in singing, a full octave above everyone else. Ted Andrews gave the little girl her first singing lessons and was immediately impressed with the child's strong voice, large vocal range, perfect pitch and precocious musical ability. This was the first time her singing voice was noticed and her parents took care to nurture and improve her singing voice in her childhood years. 
From a young age, Andrews had a heavyweight on her shoulders. With a four-octave vocal range, Andrews and her talent were unstoppable, but with the problems at home, the young star had to grow up very fast in order to help the family make money through her performing. Beyond that, she even helped raise her younger siblings. These first years of her life, Andrews lived a life full of responsibility, with a lack of childhood. But at the young age of 14, Andrews learned shocking news that her father wasn't the man she called her dad. He treated me and my siblings as his beloved companions, never dismissing or talking down to us. In 1949, when she was performing at the house of a family friend, she described, After I had sung, the owner of the house approached me. That evening the man came and sat on the couch next to me. I remember feeling an electricity between us that I couldn't explain. Later that evening her mother asked her about the man, and then proceeded to share, That man is your father. The shock set in for Andrews, but one thing was still for certain. Wells would always be her father. It did not alter the fact that the man who had raised me was the man I loved. I would always consider him my father. I loved him with all my being. Her stepfather sponsored her education. At age eight, she was taken to study with Lillian Stiles Allen, a noted concert singer. Stiles Allen trained her pupil in operatic repertoire and taught her the perfect diction for which she would become famous. She studied at Connie Ripman School, London. She was also taught by Madame Lillian Stiles Allen, a concert soprano and voice instructor. She later continued her education at Woodbrook School. Julie made her radio debut in 1946, singing a duet with Ted Andrews on a BBC variety show. She gave her first performance as a solo artist at London's Stage Door Canteen, where she was seen by two members of the royal family, the mother and sister of the present Queen. The exquisitely self-possessed little girl with the crystal clear voice was attracting the attention of serious theatrical management and was soon ready to make the move from provincial music halls to the theatres of London's West End. At age 12, Julie Andrews was cast in a musical review, Starlight Roof, at the London Hippodrome. MGM rejected her for being unfilmable and made a massive mistake. For many actors in Hollywood, especially women, who are often held to very narrow beauty standards, these are countless stories of stars who had to fight against the grain to get their fair shot at the spotlight. Among them is Julie Andrews. The American film studio had recently opened a London branch, made a screen test of the young singer, perhaps seeing her as a successor to the child singing stars of the pre-war era. Unfortunately, the young Andrews didn't make the cut, and the reviewers actually referred to her as unfilmable. The studio failed to offer her a contract, dismissing her as unphotographable. Nevertheless, she soon appeared on one of Britain's first television variety programmes. Undeterred, Andrews continued on her way through stage acting, and it looked like My Fair Lady might be her chance to make the leap onto the big screen. When it came to cast the film version, however, Andrews was once again passed over. The part instead went to Audrey Hepburn, whose studio head Jack Warner believed to be more recognisable and therefore a better draw for the film. Andrews showed immense singing talent and had more than proven her acting chops with this considerable stage work, so it made sense that she would make the leap into films. She was a former talented child star of British reviews and was very successful on Broadway with productions such as The Boyfriend, My Fair Lady and Camelot. When My Fair Lady opened in 1956, it was an unprecedented success. Critics acclaimed it as the greatest musical ever staged, and it sold out months in advance. Julie Andrews won universal praise for her incandescent performance. Her theatrical training made her ideally suited to the filmmaking style of the Hollywood musicals in the 1940s and 1950s. In the 1950s, Julie Andrews appeared in several stage productions in the US and early made-for-television films. Ultimately, the snub worked in Andrews' favour because she was available to be cast in one of her most famous roles, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins was a huge success and immediately established Julie Andrews as an international film star. Andrews scored the most spectacular success of her career with the starring role in The Sound of Music, 
another Broadway musical adaptation and the most successful motion picture made up until that time. Andrews was nominated for an Oscar again and the film was honoured as Best Picture of the Year. Julie Andrews was the only actress director Robert Wise considered seriously for the role of Maria von Trapp, but she almost didn't take the part as Maria. Out of fear that she'd be typecast as only being able to play nanny roles after being in Mary Poppins as well, Andrews almost didn't accept the role that she's most known for. Richard Rogers wanted her right off the bat, but she took some convincing. If she hadn't taken the role, it would have gone to Grace Kelly or Doris Day. The Sound of Music was accused of mawkish sentimentality by many critics, but it was Andrew's extraordinarily assured and appealing central performance that was largely responsible for the film's enormous success. Andrew's portrayals of Mary Poppins and Maria von Trapp not only made her one of the big Hollywood stars of the 60s, but after a while Julie Andrews became tired of her squeaky clean characters and sought different kinds of roles. In 1982, she won another Academy Award nomination for Victor Victoria, which marked her breakout of her singing governess image and had embarked on a new phase in her career. In 1996, Andrews appeared on Broadway in Victor Victoria, once again on stage where she first began her showbiz career. She later found love with Edwards, the filmmaker behind Hepburn's 1961 hit Breakfast at Tiffany's. Together they raised five children. Julie Andrews said she avoided sexual harassment in Hollywood because men feared her husband, Blake Edwards. Blake was the most charismatic and interesting fellow you could possibly meet. He was hilariously funny and had such a dark sense of humour that just put me away that I loved so much. I was very fortunate I didn't have any harassment in the business because, happily, I was married to Blake, who was highly respected and I don't think people thought to bother with me. I started working with him fairly early on, so I didn't have any of that to deal with. That said, I'm all for equal pay and respect for women. Although Hollywood was no longer producing the kind of musical films that had made her famous, Julie Andrews continued to develop her dramatic talents in a wider variety of roles in the 1970s and 80s, appearing in a number of films directed by her husband. In the 1990s, Andrews became increasingly involved in international charities. In the late 90s, Andrews was the victim of a failed vocal cord surgery that resulted in the loss of her singing voice. She sought treatment through surgery, but the operation damaged her larynx irreparably, effectively ending her singing career. Expert opinion concluded that the surgery had been improperly performed and Andrews received a settlement reported to be as high as $30 million. When she learned about the terrible consequences of the surgery, Andrews felt like she'd lost her identity. That would have been devastating for anyone, but especially a performer whose livelihood had been built on her famous voice. Instead of giving up, Andrews picked herself up, refocused and continued developing her career by throwing her energy into other projects. Her speaking voice remained unimpaired and Andrews has continued her acting career. When she learned that she couldn't sing anymore, Andrews went through the stages of grief, including denial and depression. Eventually she realised that singing wasn't her entire identity and she found a new way to be creative. Already the author of several books for older children, Andrews decided to write books for younger children with her own daughter Emma. As Emma once told her mother, it's a whole new way for Andrews to use her voice. The pure voice, the angelic looks and the prim, efficient Englishness of her performances have beguiled generations of children over the years. Yet how many of them could have guessed how different was her own upbringing from those of the happy young charges in the films? An upbringing so appalling that it instilled in her a ruthless determination for success and led to her being respected and loathed in Hollywood in equal measure. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Julie Andrews? She remains one of Hollywood's darlings always and forever.